I'm a Katrina evacuee, a Katrina refugee, and a Katrina survivor. And as young Jeezy would say, I'm a soul survivor. So my life has been transformed. I would be remiss to stand up before you and not talk about the unfinished business in New Orleans in the golf course. This is definitely our time and our, definitely our renaissance. The only thing Katrina did was kick the top off the hand bed to show us, Nesby, what we supposed to be about. That was a call, a clarion call to our community, to our organization, to be about the business of doing what we need to do for our people in our communities in this nation. Right now in the city of New Orleans, we have over 200,000 people still displaced. Right now in the city of New Orleans, we have 75,000 trailers still spawned all over the streets of New Orleans. Right now in the city of New Orleans, we have doctors doing surgeries in tents in an old gutted out Lords and Taylors in America, a free country. Unfinished business. I want you all to know that the four hurricanes that hit Florida in 2004 destroyed 27,000 homes. Hurricane Andrew was the monster hurricane in 1992, destroyed 28,000 homes. Katrina was 250 miles wide and destroyed 275,000 homes. Right now in the city of New Orleans, over 80% of the city was flooded, uh, 140 square miles. 9-11 was one square mile, 10 square blocks, and 10 square acres. And still to this day, New York is getting the aid that we cannot get from our government. <laughs> Unfinished business. Unfinished business. Nesby, we're here today to make sure that never again that any of you all end up on a street corner, on a roof, waiting for the government to do for you what you otherwise could have done for yourself. This is about developing yourself and developing your mind to get to a point where you never have to ask another man, another woman, another government to do for you what you otherwise could have done for yourself. And I'm not absolving the government. The government was wrong, but there's some things we got to be about. There's some business we have to finish. We've started it, but we have to finish. We play too much, we clown too much, we back that thing up, stop and drop it like it's hot all the time. The hurricane is coming. There's a Hurricane 5, Category 5, right now off the coast of America, and we're not preparing for it. Right now, while we playing, while we stunning like our daddy, while we chilling and, and, and talking about the party and the IBM party, I want you all to know that right now, at this minute, there's a little kid in India and a little kid in China studying under the coat of darkness, waiting for the opportunity to kick your behind. And it's not even personal. It's not even personal. One thing Katrina proved to you. The government ain't gonna save you. Katrina proved to you that the government ain't gonna save you, and I said ain't on purpose. The government ain't coming. They didn't come in 1865. They didn't come in uh, the turn of the century when the Ku Klux Klan was running wild. They didn't come when it was beating King Cross the head in Selma. They didn't come August 29th, and they not coming this year, and they not coming 10 years from now. And you wait on them. You wait, and they're not coming. What are you talking about, brother? As of, as of July 1st, 2006, 75% of the House of Representatives had not visited New Orleans, Louisiana, the worst natural disaster in the history of this country. As of July 1st, 2006, 54% of the Senate had not visited New Orleans, Louisiana. That's your government. They're not coming. And it's not about Republicans or Democrats. It's not about black or white. I want you all to know, as of July 20th, I mean, Senator Barack Obama made his first visit to New Orleans July 21st, 2006, 11 months after the hurricane. And I wrote him a letter, a scathing commentary on my blog, and it's called 11 months, my brother. It took you 11 months to get from Chicago to New Orleans. You couldn't find your way from Chicago to New Orleans. That's a migration pattern. I said, the only thing you had to do, brother, was take I-55 South, make a left, make a right. You would have been at my house. That's all. My house. The house, where my the house that my daddy built. The house where my mama died. The house where I'm fighting the Army Corps of Engineers right now because they're trying to take the entire backyard through enemy domain and pay me pre-Katrina values. I got a letter from the Army Corps the other day offering me $7,000 for a 30 by 60 square foot area of my backyard. Y'all might see me on CNN strapped. <laughs> Real life, unfinished business, unfinished business. 
last January, I had, to go to, I had the opportunity to go to the Netherlands. And the reason why I went to the Netherlands is because the Netherlands has the greatest flow control system in the world, Gary May, Dr. May. The Netherlands is one-third the size of the state of Louisiana. But in 1950, they had a flood that killed over 1,800 Dutch, and they said never again. And they set out on a Delta plan for 50 years, doing some of the greatest engineering models that this world has ever seen. They built structures that still we are in awe of. So we went to the Netherlands to study what they had done. There are more people living in the Netherlands below sea level than in the entire state of Louisiana. 70% of the gross national product in the Netherlands is generated below sea level. When you fly in the Amsterdam airport, you're three kilometers or nine feet below sea level. If the Dutch in wooden shoes can protect their people, then you know the greatest country in the world can protect theirs. But the question is, why hasn't this country done what it is supposed to have done by the people of New Orleans? That's the question we must ask. Why do we have unfinished business? Muhammad Ali said champions are made in the gym. He said champions must be better than their opponent. They must practice more than their opponent. They must have the stamina to go on. They must outlast their opponent. He said, he said a champion must have skill. He said a champion must have will. But he said the will is more important than the skill. The will. Nesby, we need the will to finish this business. We need the will to close this achievement gap. We need the will such that every student coming here will strive to be a torchbearer. The will. Do we have the will to change this country? Do we have the will to change this organization? Do we have the will to change ourselves? Because that's the question. The will. That's why we have unfinished business in New Orleans. That's why we have unfinished business in our children, because we have so many people just happy to be in a room, just happy to be on the executive board, just happy to be in a leadership position, just happy to be seen, rather than being about the business of our children. People, this is real life. Katrina is the proof. Katrina is the proof. I've been punched out by nature. You have to understand where I'm at. I'm stunt like my daddy today because one year ago today, I lost my daddy because he couldn't get the treatment he deserved in the aftermath of Katrina. I had to sit there and watch the undertaker come into my house and remove my daddy from my upstairs bedroom. Six days previous to that, I lost my stepmother. We had two funerals in three days. Real life. And I want to know, are you ready for your gut check? Because I got mine. And it's coming to you. Now, I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how great you are with your job. I don't care how much money you got. Because as a member of the Louisiana Recovery Authority, as the chair of the Human Service Committee, on my desk, I have documented suicides of doctors and lawyers because they couldn't deal with their gut check. They had the million dollar house, the million dollar practice, the million dollar kids, and a million dollar wife. The Katrina came, took the practice, but they still had the million dollar house, the million dollar kids, and more importantly, they still had the million dollar wife. That's a problem. So they checked out. Oh, I've also forgot to tell you, really, I'm unemployed because in de December 5th, 2005, the president of Tulane University stood up and said in the aftermath of the greatest engineering catastrophe in the world that he's going to save the football team and eliminate the engineering program. Yes. That's where we are in this country. As long as you can drop it like it's hot, shake and entertain, as long as you can run that ball hard, as long as you can jump up and duck it, there's a place for you on these campuses. But as soon as you're talking about transformational thought, transformational education, and doing what you need to do to take yourself and your community to the next level, we got to question whether or not you deserve to be here.